The Blue Jays led 1-0 over the Tigers and Dave Roseman the first, but the Tigers roared back in their first when with two outs and a man on, Richie Hebner blasted a shot off the facing of the third deck and right. His seventh of the year, all of them coming at Tiger Stadium, and it was the 2-1 Tiger lead as Hebner had his 55th RBI. The Jays tied it in the fourth when Lloyd Mosby homered, and they took the lead in the fifth and sent Roseman to the showers. Two straight doubles by Al Woods and Roy Howell got one run across. They added another on a single off reliever Roger Weaver for a 4-2 lead. It was 4-3 in the sixth when Toronto threatened again. After two straight singles, Bob Baylor lined a shot to the corner and right. One run came home, but the Tigers worked the relay perfectly from Cowens to Whitaker to Parrish, and they cut down Griffin trying to score from first, and it was a 5-3 Toronto lead. But the Tigers roared back in their sixth. Summers let off with a double, and he was followed by Tom Brookins, who singled to left, and Summers scored 5-4. Whitaker followed with another single to left field, and Brookins came roaring around third with a tying run, and all of a sudden it was a tie game at five. Then the hit and run. Whitaker on the go from first, and Rick Peters lined a shot to the gap in right center. The Jays cut it off, but they couldn't get Whitaker at home, and it was a 6-5 Tiger lead. Hebner then followed with a single down the line and left. It was another RBI for Hebner as Peters came home from second, and it was a 7-5 Tiger lead as the Tigers sent 10 men to the plate and scored four runs.
It wasn't what you'd call an historic confrontation. First, there was a 36-minute rain delay. It was the Tigers and Blue Jays, fifth and seventh place respectively, so it was understandable why only a handful of died and the Wolf fans turned out. Toronto woke them up in the second. Barry Bunnell lined a Roger Weaver pitch into the upper deck and left, and with a runner aboard, the Jays had taken a 2-0 lead. But Tommy Brookins kept the faithful on their toes as he took Joel McLaughlin down the line and left into the upper deck with two out and two teammates aboard. The Tigers had come right back to take a 3-2 lead. The Blue Jays tied it in the third and went ahead in the fifth when Lloyd Mosby lined a double to the corner and left, and Garth Orge came roaring around to make it 4-3 Toronto. In the sixth, Brookins did it again. Two runners on, two up. Brookins lines a shot down the line and right. It gets in the corner for a triple. And both runs score to give the Tigers a 5-4 lead, and Brookins had five RBIs on the night. But the Blue Jays came back in the seventh. Mosby again, a single to right. That was another RBI, and it was a tie game at five. The Blue Jays scored one more time in the inning to take a 6-5 lead. Once upon a time, there was a fifth-place club called the Tigers. It was late in September, and they were playing a seventh-place club called the Blue Jays. They enjoyed playing each other because it was fun to see who could make the most mistakes. Sometimes the Tigers threw the ball and then couldn't catch it. The Blue Jays thought that was fun because their players came home. The Tigers did that three times in tonight's story. But the Blue Jays had their fun, too. They would try to catch fly balls and grounders, and lo and behold, they would drop them or miss them completely. And all the people that came to watch these two clubs enjoyed the show. Even once when the Tigers made a good play, the catcher tagging out a runner on a rundown, the player from the Tigers was hurt when he was kicked by his teammate. The injured player, Tommy Brookins, had some stitches, but he's all right now, and that's a happy ending to that play. Twice during the game, a Toronto player named Howell hit the ball so far the Tiger players couldn't catch it. It wasn't very nice of Howell, but that was part of the game and everybody understood. Lou Whitaker for the Tigers also hit one that the Blue Jays couldn't catch. It was the first uncatchable one he's had all year. The Blue Jays had seven and the Tigers four after seven at bats, but John Wackenfuss made it 7-7 as he hit an uncatchable ball with two friends on base. Everybody liked that except Toronto. It was just last August 12th, a little more than a month ago, that Mark Fidrich returned to Detroit and played to a packed house for yet another comeback try. He still looked the same and acted the same, but since then, he's just one win. And with the season dwindling, so it seems, has the bird's appeal. And sadly enough, his comeback continues to slow down. Only a handful were on hand tonight, and they saw Fidrich go only two-thirds of an inning. He walked five and gave up no hits. He was charged with five runs, and his ERA went up to 5.49. When he left, it was 2-0 Toronto, but the bases were loaded. Jerry Uger came on and gave up a triple to Paul Hodgson, and that cleared the bases, and Fidrich's record for the night was complete. Before the inning was over, Toronto had a 6-0 lead, and the future of Mark Fidrich is still in doubt, and it's up to Sparky whether the bird will throw again in 1980. It was 7-2 Toronto into the sixth, with the crowd more or less sitting on their hands since Fidrich left when Steve Kemp ignited a five-run inning. He hit a mammoth solo home run into the bleachers in deep right center, and it was a 7-3 game. Al Cowens then came through with a bases loaded single and two more runs came home as the fans started to get with it again and the Tigers responded by getting two more. The last coming on a sacrifice fly to tie it up at seven and it was an even game. 